maybe the pulse of life is is way more than what we limitly think of as sound all contractions and expansions have parallels to one another this idea of receding and expanding all at once one of the most troubling aspects of this story is that I have no mental contribution to it and that I have no memory. It's weird to just be in that void with you and no one else was in the room. And there's so much uncertainty and there you can feel the fear in the air, you know, it's palpable. It's not coming from you, but it's coming from the doctors who don't even know and from mom and from all of us who who want you to continue living, but we really have no certainty of, of guaranteeing that. And so it was in this limbo state and I took your very cold hand in my hand and I started singing to you a chant that I learned a long time ago that it's part of some Sanskrit scripture and I saw your your heart rate dramatically increase the whole time I was singing it. As I stopped, you went back to this not more non-active state. When we hear a voice deliver something, there is something that happens inside of us. Wherever we happen to be, it could be a a literal mountaintop experience, but, but you feel something and we say that that is, that is spiritual. It's a very special feeling. How did our insides get that? We, we think it's through the ears, through the hearing process and how the sound, how, how the sound gets translated by the brain. But why would it make our heart, our, our insides, our lungs feel so full. What you're saying happened in the hospital. I had no awareness, nor do I have any memory of my ears working. What did that sound do? It, it's, it's actually a, a very interesting thing to ponder. Did the sound go through the same processes that it goes through when we are conscious. In certain schools of, of thought, if you study enough about, you know, meditation in general, you'll, you'll get into these discussion groups where they'll talk about dualism versus non-dualism. To enter into the non-dual where there's no more binaries, there's even no way to really define it. Because as soon as you start trying to define it, you're making it something dualistic. One of my meditation teachers used to say, you would have zero memory if you had gone into the non-dual. And so that to me is kind ooh, of ooh. what happened, you know? I, I, I said to the cardiologist one time, he said, how are you doing? And I said, I'm, I'm, you know, doing fine. Except I do have some emotional scarring or trauma. Or he said, like, what do you mean? He said, I, I, this, this was many months ago now. I said, well, a lot of people talk about near death experiences. And I didn't have any of that. I have none of that. And he said, one of the reasons is because you weren't near death. You were dead. I think you have always had a striving energy in you. You don't want to stop. You, you may run slow and I've run with you and, and our pacing may be slow, but you have never just given up. You've never given up. 